I was born to a family that's immigrant. My parents were from Italy and uh, my father came over to the United States first until he had enough money for their four children to come over here. The neighborhood was very, very rough neighborhood we were from. It, we called it Raleigh Street. Italians, Croatians, colored people, Finnish people, we had some Norwegians. We all lived together, you know, all in like one big family. My dad, he was a proud old man, I'll tell you, he just didn't know, you know, much about America or anything like that, but he knew it was a free country. Turned 18 years old, and I got a call. They picked me out and they went, I got in the service. And my dad says, well, you can't do nothing, but you got to go. I said, well, that's where I'm going. It was late in the Second World War when duty finally called Sergeant Michael Kalalillo to action. When he arrived at boot camp, his street smarts made him stand out as a soldier, even though he was small for his age. His natural understanding of conflict quickly earned him the bronze and silver stars. But in the spring of 1945, with his early successes behind him, Sergeant Kalalillo found himself in the town of Untergrisheim, Germany, facing his greatest challenge yet. We're outside of town a little bit. And that's when they said we're going to go up the front and take the town. There was hills and sides of us that had machine gun nests. The Germans still were throwing bombs at us. The whole company got pinned down. Didn't know what to do. We couldn't get up, they would shoot us right away. And I didn't know what was happening. I got scared a little bit and found out, and then here comes two little tanks. And when we heard them tanks coming up, we thought first maybe they were Germans, but they weren't. Crazy Mike. I got up behind him and I said, come on boys, let's get the going, let's get up out of here. And we all got up. And we got behind him and then this, uh, Shrapnel come and hit me, and my gun was knocked out of my hand. I didn't know what to do at the time. And that's when I jumped up on that tank, and the lieutenant or the captain of the tank says, what are you doing up here? I said, my gun shot out of my hand. I need a gun. He said, well, use the, tom use the machine gun up there first, and he says, mounted right on a turret. That bullet's rattling off the tank, and told, he told me where to shoot. I don't know but how many I shot. Then the gun jammed. So I jumped off the tank and, and then there's my sergeant over there. Mike, I'm wounded, I'm wounded, I can't walk. Okay, I ran over there, I grabbed him, put him on my shoulder and I took him down. Oh, I don't know how far back to the lines. He would have been in the hands of the Germans if I'd have left him there. You know. Sergeant Kalalillo's selfless actions saved many lives that afternoon and his infectious bravery re-energized the men around him to continue the fight. Within a day, they had taken the town. Shortly thereafter, Army MPs made an unexpected visit to the front lines with orders to convey the young sergeant back to headquarters immediately. Well, I was still fighting up in the lines. I went someplace else and still fighting. Company runner come with the MPs up to the front lines and told the sergeant they want to take me, they want Mike to get out of here. And what the heck did I do wrong? You know, I, I didn't. Well, anyway, he got back to the company and the, 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 the captain up there and he's looking at me, he says, well, he says, I know you were pretty good, but I didn't know you were that good, he says. I said, what happened? He says, you're, you're going to go back for the Medal of Honor. I said, what's that? He said, that's the highest reward you can get. Holy man. Picked us up at the airport. We had a big limousine and we didn't need to pay for it because they had signed everything for it. And they took us here and took us to the monument. My dad, the, you know, his eyes pop up all the time. You go, oh boy. He was so happy that you couldn't believe it told everybody, yeah, I'm going to go down and see the president. <laughs> they believe me. You know, what immigrant would believe that? So you're going to go see a candidate to president. What? I got this for 
saving many lives. A lot of people thought you won it. I mean, you don't win things. God almighty, you only win the lottery. I fought for that medal. And if I had to do it again, I would maybe have to do it again.